Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology, and we always like to explore all the different trends of the day. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and something that has become incredibly popular, especially on the East Coast, and it's starting to catch on all over the country and finally here, is drinks that incorporate fresh banana. And I know that sounds a little strange because people sometimes use banana liqueur or infusion in a drink, but we're actually making drinks now where we muddle or pulverize fresh banana in the cocktail shaker. And it adds a unique taste to the drink. And of course, you have to make sure that you use it pretty quick because banana can actually add kind of a bitter flavor to the drink, especially if too much of the peel or the inside of the peel gets in the drink. But fresh banana adds an interesting dimension to drinks. And curiously enough, the first drink that we're gonna make incorporating banana is a tequila-based drink, which you would never think would be appropriate with banana, yet it is. And this drink, interestingly enough, is called the Coco Chanel, after the famous designer. Because we also use coconut rum in it, because Coconut and banana, like pineapple, coconut and banana, all go together. And although we do not use pineapple in this drink, we do use the coconut and the banana. And what we're going to have to do first is add the tequila. Again, we're going to use the shaker, and before we even put ice in, we're going to add the tequila and then the banana, and we're going to pulverize about a quarter of a banana to begin with, and then we'll add the other ingredients. And again, I'm going to be kind, and I'm going to measure for you to a certain degree, as I always say. Okay, we're going to add the typical shot or so to the shaker of tequila, maybe a tiny bit more. And then we're going to add the quarter banana to this drink, and we're going to attempt to mash it up or muddle or pulverize it a bit. I think pulverize or mash is a better term for what we're doing other than uh, muddle. And we're going to chop it up a bit more so that this is going to work. And using a ripe banana is okay, but using one that's really not quite there is better. Because sometimes a ripe banana, again, will add an odd, bitter off flavor to a drink. So we're mashing up that banana and we're kind of working it against the side of the cocktail shaker to make sure that all the goodness there is going to come out of it. And uh, when we shake it, it's going to di the flavor is going to divest itself in the drink. So I think I've done a pretty good job of torturing the banana and working it into the tequila. So at this point we will add our ice. And the ice storage, as I mentioned, is important, but I simply use something that keeps the ice cold and keeps it from melting. I don't use anything fancy or expensive. I don't have ice making equipment, but this works just as well for the purpose. And it shows again, when you make these cocktails, you don't have to go out and buy expensive barware, expensive liquor, or bar refrigerators or ice makers. You can use whatever you happen to have, and if you don't have it, you can get it inexpensively without spending a lot of money. Now, the next ingredient that we're gonna use in this is the coconut rum, which gives it the name, the Coco Chanel. And again, we're gonna add about half as much of what we added of the, of the tequila into the glass. And, in addition to that, we're going to add a bit of lemon into this drink. Not a grandiose amount, but just enough to give it that hint of tartness. And this prevents the drink from becoming cloying. And I, in this case, am going to leave the spent shell in the drink, as I sometimes do. 
because that's important because even more of the oils will infuse in the cocktail when you do that. And I think it's critically important to make sure that that oil is in the drink because it makes it taste so much better than if you squeeze it with an electronic squeezer or even hand squeeze it without working it with your hands. So anyway, we are going to go ahead now and shake the drink up and then divest it into this style of a glass. You could also use a martini glass for this particular cocktail if you wish. And if you want to, you could also add a hint of orange to this drink. In fact, I think just for the sake of doing so, if I can get the top off, it may be too late. I think I will add a little bit of orange into the drink, just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and shake it up. Yep, this is the Coco Chanel. In this particular drink, we do not serve over ice. Instead, we're going to divest it directly into the cocktail glass and drink it in that fashion, much as you would a martini or other styles of cocktails. So I'm going to go ahead and divest it into the cocktail glass. And you might get a little bit of banana pulp or residue in the drink, but you shouldn't get a huge amount of it. And if you wish, you could add some banana liqueur to it, but it's going to make it, to my taste, a bit too sweet. It's better to let the subtleties of the fresh banana stay in there instead of adding that extra sweetness. You're going to get enough sweetness from the coconut liqueur. And how unique to think that you can combine coconut liqueur with tequila, but you certainly can. And again, any brand will do. You don't want rot gut, but you don't have to go out and buy the finest either. And for a garnish, I'm going to actually add a little bit of banana, just to let people know that that's what's in the drink, a little wheel of it. And then a tiny bit of orange in this particular case, because it'll look pretty that way and you'll get just a little bit more infusion of the orange. And I'm going to go ahead and taste it and see if it is blended correctly and if I have the right amount of ingredients to make this cocktail taste as it should. Oh yes, that is quite nice. Because the note of the banana is definitely there and the coconut rum is there too. And it really marries beautifully with tequila. Now, you can go out and buy expensive tequila, but why? Expensive tequila is for sipping. And a lot of people do strange things. Like I'll rem I remember one time I was a mixologist at an event where the gentleman wanted me to make margaritas. And he buys really expensive tequila and margarita mix. And I told him, I said, that's not acceptable. You'd be better off buying cheap tequila, inexpensive tequila, and letting me use the fresh lime, hint of fresh lemon, and simple syrup, and the triple sec. Because that's preposterous to spend all that money on expensive liquor and use cheap, crummy ingredients to mix it with. So better to stint on the expense of the alcohol, but not on the fresh ingredients. And again, this is a lovely drink, a unique drink. You can impress people with this because it's a new trend, the use of banana in cocktails. I must admit, I really do like that. That's a good drink, a very worthy drink. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews, a mixologist, and thank you for tuning in to Good Libations. And remember, we want to keep our community safe and well-spoken of. So if we're going to drink, be careful about driving or don't drive at all. And be responsible with your drinking. It, it is not a compliment to the mixologist if we just chug drinks down like we're a fraternity brother. That doesn't compliment the one who made the drink. So drink moderately and sensibly. And thank you again. 
and we'll look forward to further episodes. Goodbye.